Total internal reflection is a phenomenon that happens when a propagating light strikes a medium boundary at an angle larger than a particular critical angle with respect to the normal to the surface. If the refractive index is lower on the other side of the boundary and the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, the wave cannot pass through and is entirely reflected. The critical angle is the angle of incidence above which the total internal reflectance occurs. This is particularly common as an optical phenomenon, where light waves are involved, but it occurs with many types of waves, such as electromagnetic waves in general or sound waves. When a wave crosses a boundary between different materials with different kinds of refractive indices, the wave will be partially refracted at the boundary surface, and partially reflected. However, if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle a euro the angle of incidence at which light is refracted such that it travels along the boundary a euro then the wave will not cross the boundary and instead be totally reflected back internally. This can only occur when the wave in a medium with a higher refractive index hits its surface that's in contact with a medium of lower refractive index. For example, it will occur with light hitting air from glass, but not when hitting glass from air. Optical description, total internal reflection of light can be demonstrated using a semicircular block of glass or plastic. A ray box shines a narrow beam of light onto the glass. The semicircular shape ensures that a ray pointing towards the center of the flat face will hit the curved surface at a right angle. This will prevent refraction at the air glass boundary of the curved surface. At the glass air boundary of the flat surface, what happens will depend on the angle. Where I see is the critical angle measurement which is caused by the sun or a light source, if I I see, the ray will split. Some of the ray will reflect off the boundary, and some will refract as it passes through. This is not total internal reflection. If I I see, the entire ray reflects from the boundary. None passes through. This is called total internal reflection. This physical property makes optical fibers useful and prismatic binoculars possible. It is also what gives diamonds their distinctive sparkle, as diamond has an unusually high refractive index. Critical angle. The critical angle is the angle of incidence above which total internal reflection occurs. The angle of incidence is measured with respect to the normal at the refractive boundary. Consider a light ray passing from glass into air. The light emanating from the interface is bent towards the glass. When the incident angle is increased sufficiently, the transmitted angle reaches 90 degrees. It is at this point no light is transmitted into air. The critical angle is given by Snell's law. Rearranging Snell's law, we get incidence. To find the critical angle, we find the value for when 90 a degree and thus the resulting value of is equal to the critical angle. Now, we can solve for, and we get the equation for the critical angle. If the incident ray is precisely at the critical angle, the refracted ray is tangent to the boundary at the point of incidence. If for example, visible light were traveling through acrylic glass into air, the calculation would give the critical angle for light from acrylic into air, which is light incident on the border with an angle less than 41.8 a degree would be partially transmitted while light incident on the border at larger angles with respect to normal would be totally internally reflected. If the fraction is greater than 1, then arc sine is not defined at a euro meaning that total internal reflection does not occur even at very shallow or grazing incident angles. So the critical angle is only defined when is less than 1. A special name is given to the angle of incidence that produces an angle of refraction of 90 age. It is called the critical angle. Derivation of evanescent wave, an important side effect of total internal reflection is the appearance of an evanescent wave beyond the boundary surface. Essentially, even though the entire incident wave is reflected back into the originating medium, there is some penetration into the second medium at the boundary. The evanescent wave appears to travel along the boundary between the two materials, leading to the goose ha currency NCHEN shift. If a plane wave, confined to the XZ plane, is incident on a dielectric with an angle and wave vector then a transmitted ray will be created with a corresponding angle of transmittance as shown in the figure above. The transmitted wave vector is given by if, then since and the relation obtained from Snell's law, is greater than 1 for, 
as a result of this becomes complex. The electric field of the transmitted plane wave is given by and so evaluating this further one obtains. And. Using the fact that in Snell's law, one finally obtains. Where and. This wave in the optically less dense medium is known as the evanescent wave. It is characterized by its propagation in the x direction and its exponential attenuation in the z direction. Although there is a field in the second medium, it can be shown that no energy flows across the boundary. The component of pointing vector in the direction normal to the boundary is finite, but its time average vanishes. Whereas the other two components of pointing vector, and their time averaged values are in general found to be finite. Frustrated total internal reflection. Under ordinary conditions, the evanescent wave transmits zero net energy across the interface. However, if a third medium with a higher refractive index than the low index second medium is placed within less than several wavelengths distance from the interface between the first medium and the second medium, the evanescent wave will be different from the usual one, and it will pass energy across the second into the third medium. This process is called frustrated total internal reflection and is very similar to quantum tunneling. The quantum tunneling model is mathematically analogous if one thinks of the electromagnetic field as being the wave function of the photon. The low index medium can be thought of as a potential barrier through which photons can tunnel. The transmission coefficient for FTIR is highly sensitive to the spacing between the third medium and the second medium. So this effect has often been used to modulate optical transmission and reflection with a large dynamic range. Phase shift upon total internal reflection A lesser known aspect of total internal reflection is that the reflected light has an angle-dependent phase shift between the reflected and incident light. Mathematically this means that the Fresnel reflection coefficient becomes a complex rather than a real number. This phase shift is polarization dependent and grows as the incidence angle deviates further from the critical angle toward grazing incidence. The polarization dependent phase shift is long known and was used by Fresnel to design the Fresnel room which allows to transform circular polarization to linear polarization and vice versa for a wide range of wavelengths, in contrast to the quarter wave plate. The polarization-dependent phase shift is also the reason why TE and TM guided modes have different dispersion relations. Applications Total internal reflection is the operating principle of optical fibers, which are used in endoscopes and telecommunications. Total internal reflection is the operating principle of automotive rain sensors, which control automatic windscreen windshield wipers. Another application of total internal reflection is the spatial filtering of light. Prisms in binoculars use total internal reflection, rather than reflective coatings, to fold optical paths and show erect images. Some multi-touch screens use frustrated total internal reflection in combination with a camera and appropriate software to pick up multiple targets. Gynioscopy employs total internal reflection to be the anatomical angle formed between the eye's cornea and iris. A gait analysis instrument, Catwalk XT, uses frustrated total internal reflection in combination with a high-speed camera to capture and analyze footprints of laboratory rodents. Optical fingerprinting devices use frustrated total internal reflection in order to record an image of a person's fingerprint without the use of ink. A total internal reflection fluorescence microscope uses the evanescent wave produced by TIR to excite fluorophores close to a surface. This is useful for the study of surface properties of biological samples. Examples in everyday life Total internal reflection can be observed while swimming, when one opens one's eyes just under the water's surface. If the water is calm, its surface appears mirror-like. One can demonstrate total internal reflection by filling a single bath with water and placing a glass tumbler upside down over the drain. As long as water remains in the tumbler, the drain remains visible, since the angle of refraction between glass and water will not be greater than the critical angle. If the drain is opened, then the water can drain out of the upside down tumbler, leaving it filled with air. Viewed from above, the tumbler now appears mirrored because light reflects off the air glass interface. Another common example of total internal reflection is a critically cut diamond. 
This is what gives it maximum brilliance and sparkles. See also Goose Ha Currency NCHEN Effect, Perfect Mirror, Snell's Window, References. Uh, this article incorporates a public domain material from the General Services Administration document Federal Standard 1037C. External links FTIR Touch Sensing, Multi Touch Interaction Research, Georgia State University. Total Internal Reflection by Michael Schreiber, Wolfram Demonstrations Project, Total Internal Reflection A Euro St. Mary's Physics Online Notes, Bowley, Roger. Total Internal Reflection. 60 Symbols. Brady Heron for the University of Nottingham A.